Topic 8.5, Community Ecology, Part 3, Keystone Species and Trophic Cascades. To help you study, I've put together a checklist that tells you exactly what you need to study in AP Bio Unit 8, and in fact, all of AP Biology. To download it, go to apbiosuccess.com slash checklist. What are keystone species? These are species whose action in a biological community structures the entire community. They're frequently, but not always, predators who keep a particular herbivore in check, and their effect is to increase the overall biodiversity of a biological community. Using the example of sea stars in the intertidal zone explain how keystone species promote biodiversity. Sea stars are predators, and they prey on a variety of other animals in the intertidal zone. Here's the intertidal zone, the zone between the low tide and the high tide, and here are some of the many animals that sea stars prey on, including, importantly, mussels. When sea stars are removed from the intertidal zone, biodiversity can plummet. That's because by preying on the mussels, Sea stars create ecological space, physical space, for other invertebrates to live in this community, and that keeps biodiversity high. So this is what this community looks like when sea stars are present. When sea stars are experimentally removed, which happened in a famous experiment by Robert Payne in the 1960s, where he took sea stars and threw them into the ocean away from the intertidal zone where they were preying on mussels, the mussels overgrew the entire intertidal zone and that caused species diversity to fall. All the other species that were previously living in that zone couldn't live there anymore. So that's the effect of the removal of a keystone species upon the diversity of a biological community. Your success at AP Biology starts here. Are you struggling with AP Bio? With learn-biology.com, students get the skills and confidence to be a top student and earn fours and fives on the AP Bio exam, guaranteed. Go to learn-biology.com to find out how you can master your biology course and crush the AP Bio exam. Another example of a trophic cascade relates to the reintroduction of wolves into Yellowstone National Park. That reintroduction happened in the 1990s. Previous to that, wolves had become locally extinct in the Yellowstone ecosystem, mostly due to overhunting. When wolves were reintroduced, they started to prey upon elk. The elk in the wolves absence had reduced the numbers of aspen and willows, particularly along riverbanks. So the aspen and willows were able to regrow. That provided habitat for beavers to use the willows and aspens to create beaver dams. That created great aquatic habitat and that led to an increase in organisms like amphibians, fish, and songbirds. The wolves were also competitors with the coyotes. So their reintroduction led to a decrease Increase in coyote numbers, and that led to flourishing of some coyote prey, including foxes, rodents, and antelopes. The main thing for you as an AP biology student is to be able to interpret a diagram like this and to know the basic idea, which is that the reintroduction of a keystone species increases biodiversity through a trophic cascade effect. To clear up a possible source of confusion, note that the top predator is not always the keystone species. This emerged from a famous study by James Estes in the waters off Alaska in the 1990s. And what Estes discovered is that when orcas changed their prey preference from seals to otters, then otters were no longer able to control the population of urchins urchins overgrazed the kelp and that led to an overall decline in the kelp forest ecosystem. You can see this in this data set and this kind of data set is something that could definitely appear on the AP bio exam or on your teacher's next test and what this shows 
is that a reduction in otters by orcas, these numbers show the various islands where Estes studied this decline, led to an increase in the biomass of sea urchins. Here it is in the late 1980s. Here it is just before 1997. That led to more intense grazing by sea urchins upon kelp. This is a measure of their grazing intensity. And that led to kelp forest decline, which you can see in the overall decrease in kelp forest density. Again, What's important, it's your ability to interpret these data sets and connect it to the idea of a trophic cascade. Finally, it's important to note that not all keystone species are top predators. For example, beavers are what are called ecosystem engineers and their dams create habitats for dozens of other species, increasing biodiversity. Here are your next moves for AP BioSuccess. Please subscribe to learn-biology.com and please watch this next video.